Okay. Yes, go ahead. What's the challenge for the test? Oh, the, the, the exam coming up next Tuesday will cover up through the last session. In the last session, we did law, signs, and cosines, and oscillations, oscillations <coughs> harmonic models, simple harmonic models, which you've seen actually earlier in the course as well. So that's what the test will cover, and your homework will cover up through uh, this homework on polar, because I want you to keep going on this homework, though. So turn the homework notebooks in also next Tuesday. Okay, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Okay. Let's talk now about polar equations and graphs. Okay, so first of all, let's look at polar equations. Let's see, if I gave you this equation in algebra, x squared plus y squared equals 36, you all would say that's a complicated equation or a simple equation? Simple. Simple. What is it as a shape, drawing, what? graph? What? It's a circle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, a circle of radius 6, right? Mm -hmm. Easy and simple. At this point in the town, at this point in time, for you, right? Easy and simple. About as basic as it gets for something nonlinear. Okay, so a nice simple circle. Okay. Now, before I go any further with you, and here's what you should remember: x, y, and six. That relationship is sitting right here. Okay. Before I go any further with you, let me just ask you this. Y equals 3. That's pretty simple, too, isn't it? What's that graph like? A line. A horizontal line. A horizontal line up at Y equals 3, right? Right? Y equals 3. Simple. Very simple. Okay. What's X in this equation? What's x? Well, that's one spot. Any real number, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't x any real number? Even though it's not explicitly stated in this equation, x can be any real number, right? And that gives you this family of points, an infinite family of points, right? Okay, now, here's your thing you're memorized to help you do translation from rectangular to polar, right? Where this is x and this is y, right? So, if I want to translate this equation from its rectangular form into its polar, here's its rectangular form, and I want to translate it to its polar form, x squared plus y squared is equivalent to what? Look at that picture. X squared plus y squared is? R squared. R squared. <laughs> fast, OK, right? X squared plus y squared is R squared, right? So when you see an equation in rectangular form, you can replace x squared plus y squared with R squared, couldn't you? Well, let's say you didn't even see that, which apparently some of you just didn't see, OK? Right? But you do know you can replace x with what to go to get the polar? What can you replace x with? R cosine, r cosine theta. And you could replace the y in here with r sine theta, right? Mm -hmm. So just let's just step on in there and do it. So we're going to come into our equation here, and we're going to replace x with r cosine theta and y with r sine theta. So we're going to get r cosine theta quantity squared plus r sine theta quantity squared equals 36, right? Clean this up a little bit, and don't you see a common r squared here that could be factored out? Mm -hmm. And what's left would be a cosine squared theta 
plus a sine squared theta, which that product then is equal to 36. But we know that cos squared plus sine squared is 1. So r squared equals 36. r equals plus or minus 6. But what I would probably select is just r equals 6. Now tell me, which equation is simpler? r equals 6 or x squared plus y squared equals 36? <laughs> What's theta down here? What's theta in this equation? I'm going to put the equation up over here. R equals 6. What's theta? Y over X. Think about yeah. it. What's theta? My arm is 6 long. <laughs> What's theta? Any angle. Any angle. Yeah. Right? Go back down here for a second. Y equals 3. What's X? Any real number, right? No, nothing different going on. Come up here, r equals six. What's that telling you about theta? Theta is all real, all real numbers or all possible angles. What kind of shape do you get? A circle. The radius six. Any theta? Actually, all theta. Okay, so things that lend themselves to some kind of circular symmetry, things, shapes that lend themselves to circular type of symmetry, some type of symmetry in a circular fashion, are going to be best represented or more simply represented in a polar form, in a polar form. Things like an airplane propeller, the prop on a speedboat, the petals of a flower, Okay. Other types of shapes like ellipses and so forth lend themselves very nicely to a polar representation. And then the using translating them into that format and then using that mathematics on them is a lot easier and, and doing the mathematical processes when you're in a polar format is a lot simpler than doing it back in the rectangular world, in the XY world. Okay, so this is how you translate an equation. You simply use the st information that's right in this little picture here to translate from rectangular into polar, or vice versa, or vice versa. So let's do the reverse. And we'll get to the graphs here in a second. Let's go from a polar form back to a rectangular form. Polar form back to a rectangular form. Okay, so let's see. How about writing an equation R equals four sine of theta. R equals four sine theta. Do you have your triangle memorized with x, y, r, theta in it? What can you replace r with in rectangular? What can you replace r with? Uh, square root of x plus y. X squared, right? x squared plus Radical y squared. of x squared plus y squared, right? Yeah. Okay. What can you replace sine theta with? From your original definition, y over y over r, right? From the triangle, from the triangle, y over r for sine theta. Well, r, if I multiply both sides by r, 
I'm going to end up seeing the square of this then, the square of this square root, aren't I? And I'm just going to be getting x squared plus y squared equals 4y. If I multiply both sides by r, and r happens to be this square root, so I have the square root times the square root gives, gives me x squared plus y squared. Ready with me? Okay, it's kind of fun. What can we do to this? I'm taking you back to the first week in college algebra. You can divide, isolate the y, the y that's not squared yet, by dividing x squared plus y squared by 4. Nope. Because uh, you got your variables in both places here, actually in three locations. Here's what you got to do. You move it all over to one side. Oh, well, that's right. Factor it out. All right? Yeah. When you make a factor. Now, ah, what's well, this remind you of? What process? Don't forget it, which some of you have. <laughs> You've got to complete the square. Oh, yeah. <laughs> College algebra, first week. <laughs> You've got to complete the square. Quick refresher. You have a quadratic expression here in y, right? You take half of the linear coefficient, which is negative 2. I suggest you write it down and circle it. Do what with it? Remember what to do with this? No, you don't remember? Square it. <laughs> Square negative 4 and you get plus 4. Tuck it in right there. Remember this? Yeah. Is it dusting off the cobwebs? Take half the linear coefficient, square it, put it in here. Uh-oh, I just added 4 to the left side of the equation. To keep things balanced, let me go over on the other side of the equation and also add 4. Now it's still balanced, isn't it? And the beauty of what we just did, now we created this trinomial, that is a binomial square. Lots of good vocabulary here. So we have x squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared, a binomial square, using the negative 2 again, equals 4, or 2 squared over there. What shape is this? First week college algebra. A circle. A circle. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> a circle that is, has a center at zero, positive two, and a radius of two. Rectangular equation, polar equation. Which one's simpler, folks? Polar. If you remember your algebra, you probably like this <laughs> because this thing is new. Okay. Now watch this. This is where we sort of blow our minds on this. Okay. This gets to be good. Okay. How do you take? <laughs> How do you take this equation and draw that circle? How do you take this polar equation and draw that circle? This gets exciting. I gave all of you a little handout. I'm going to throw one of them on the computer screen here so people can see it if they're watching the recording. Check this out. I'm going to enlarge this so people can see this. There we are. This is called polar graph paper. And the reason I have my fingers on it is because it's kind of, actually, it'll sit there okay. It's still readable. Okay, this is called polar graph paper. Here, notice your angles shown. Again, I talked earlier about you set your angles, right? You come up with your angle. You set your angle. You 
to set your angle, whatever it happens to be, and then from the pole, you travel outward in the direction of that unless the radius is negative. Then you go the opposite direction. Okay? With me? So you can actually use this paper, and you can, you can Xerox this or copy this, and then blow it up, and then actually use this to do polar problems for drawing pictures. So let's come back up to the board. How do you do this with just pencil and regular paper? I forgot to bring my stick with me today. I'm going to just use my arm. So, back in the first chapter of this course, we learned how to draw sine waves. You could draw this picture very easily, couldn't you? If I say plot R that way and theta this way, that's just a plain old sine wave with, a, with an amplitude of 4, right? Mm -hmm. So you just draw it. And I might draw it through more than one cycle. Okay. This represents the radius. And so as we're letting the angle sweep from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, we're going to get a peak radius reading at 90 degrees. Of 4. Of 4, right? And then as you go from 180 degrees towards 360 degrees, you're going to be having negative radiuses. Do you see how this all ties together with stuff I talked about earlier? Yeah. Now, watch my arm. If I have my, my, this arm right here is my base. That's my positive x-axis, right, from which I measure my angles. So when theta is zero degrees with my marker, when theta is zero degrees, what's my radius? What do you see there? Zero. 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 When I get to 90 degrees, here's my polar graphing going on. What's happening as I let my radius, as, as I let my radius axis rotate? My angles are growing, aren't they? Towards 90 degrees. And what's happening to the radius as I go towards 90 degrees here? Look at that picture. It's going up to its peak. The radius is growing, isn't it? So imagine a little slider here on my arm, a nice little bracelet. Okay. Now, as my arm is rotating and the angle keeps changing, my bracelet is slipping outward, right? It's getting longer, isn't it? See these link links getting longer? Those links are getting longer until when I get to 90 degrees, my radius, my bracelet is clear up here at 4. Make sense? <laughs> then what happens when I go past 90 degrees now? I'm going to step over which way? There. When I go past 90 degrees now, What's happening to that bracelet, that radius? It's dropping. <coughs> Look right here. It's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. The same way that it was growing before 90 degrees, right? Do you see the symmetry here? See the symmetry? To either side of 90 degrees there? So you're going to expect to see that when you draw this polar graph. Now check out this picture. Here's my radiuses. Here's my radial axis, like with my arm and the bracelet. And that radius is slipping outward as I move outward here. The radius is getting longer and longer and longer until when I'm at 90 degrees, the radius is longest of length 4. I go past 90 degrees, and my radius vectors are pointing outward from the center here, from the pole, and the bracelet is getting shorter. The radius is getting shorter as I head towards 180 degrees. So I, I like to call this thing the rectangular plot. And books don't show that for some reason. They give you all kinds of formulas and all kinds of weird things to memorize. And I can't memorize that stuff. I do this. I, this takes us back to the beginning of the course beginning of the course, and then we just use this to help us translate ourselves into this polar world. And we end up with this shape. Now, in 30 seconds, watch this. You're going to love it. Back to the calculator screen real quickly. I'm done here in just a moment. I don't want you to rely on what I'm going to show you right now until after you're pretty good by doing this stuff by hand like I showed you in class. 
So here's, here's something you can do. You can take your calculator and I'm gonna keep it in degree mode and I'm gonna come down here to on my mode screen and I'm gonna go over here to polar mode, polar mode. So I select polar and then I'm gonna hit Y equals and look at what my Y equals screen now looks like. R equals four sine. I hit my X key, but look at what it punched. It now treats it as the letter theta, as my independent variable. I now go to the window settings, right? You do your Y equals first. You now go to your window settings and look at this. I have the choice, I have the control. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to turn the base on here. For the recording, here's the R equals. After I changed into the polar mode, when I got to there from this, right here, I activate polar mode, I go to Y equals, I then come to the control here, and how far do I need to go on my angles to get the graph? 180 degrees is what we said a moment ago. And I'm gonna do graphing every five degrees. And then down here now, we have the control over the angles up here. Down below, we have our window settings. So I'm now gonna set a window that is negative six to six, one, and vertically negative two to five, one. You got those numbers written down, those six numbers? Negative six, six, one, negative two, five, one. And then I hit graph and I'm gonna pause it as it goes. I just paused it. What angle are we about at right here? At that point? Probably up around 50, 60 degrees, right? Yeah. You with me? So we're moving from zero to 180 degrees and it's calculating the R value and then it's plotting the points for us. There's the picture. It's not a function, is it? It's a polar function, but as a rectangular function, it's not a function, or as a rectangular relationship, it's not a function, is it? Okay, so it doesn't pass a vertical line test, but it is a polar function. And then when you turn trace on, here's your traditional stuff, X and Y. So you can move to 45 degrees and see what the X readings are and Y readings, all right? Also, you can go to format, look at this, format up on the zoom key, and you can go to polar graphing coordinates right there and hit graph and trace. And let's say I go to 60 degrees. 60 degrees, here's your radius, here's your 60 degrees. The radius happens to be 3.46, and you're at 60 degrees. Okay, enough said for today. Have fun with that.